and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to share my August TBR. So I can't believe it's already going to be August, the last month of the summer. It feels like uh, this summer has gone by so so quickly and there are still lots of books that I had hoped to read this summer that I haven't got to or books that kind of seem to have a summery vibe to me that I wanted to get read during the summer months. So I've made a list of 10 of those books that I would love to read in August. We will see how many I get through. So three of them I have physically off of my own bookshelves and then the rest I'm going to be uh, reading either digitally or in audiobook format and uh, I will just get into the list of books. So first of all is The Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver. This book was on my five star nonfiction prediction video for this year and I've only got two books left from that five star prediction video to read and The Lacuna is one of them. I think just the cover of this makes me think of summer, the colors, kind of the orange and red and yellow. Uh, it makes me think it's going to be a summery book. I don't know if it actually is summery, but uh, I am hoping to read it in August. This book is also going to fulfill a prompt for the remaining squares I have left on the summer book bingo card, and that is read a book that you've owned for more than five years. And I have owned this book, I would say, for at least 10, probably about 10 years now. Uh, so it's a uh, high overdue to get read and discover what I think about it. This book, I believe, is set in Mexico during the 1930s and 1940s, and we're following our main character called Harrison Shepard. And the little headline blurb here says, In her most accomplished novel, Barbara Kingsolver takes us on an epic journey from the Mexico City of artists Diego Riviera and Frida Kahlo to the America of Pearl Harbor, FDR, and J. Edgar Hoover. The lacuna is a poignant story of a man pulled between two nations as they invent their modern identities. So it's got lots of uh, international intrigue, geopolitics, and I think the Mexican setting will feel very summer appropriate. So that is the first book that I have on my TBR for August. Then another summer book bingo prompt um, fulfilly is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is going to be fulfilling the prompt uh, second chance author because I read Daisy Jones and the Six in May and I didn't hate it but I didn't love it as much as it is hyped up to be and it kind of put a damper for me on reading the rest of Taylor Jenkin Reid's writings. That was the first book of hers that I had read and it's just so so highly acclaimed and then the the Amazon Prime series came out and everyone was raving about it and listening to the soundtrack and I had to get in on on what was going on and it was an okay novel but I didn't fall in love with it the way a lot of people seem to have. This book is all about a uh, Hollywood movie star Evelyn Hugo who at the end of her career uh, chooses a fairly unknown reporter Monique Grant to write her life story and kind of reveal the secrets behind her star-studded career and the seven husbands that she collected along the way. Uh, Right away, flipping through, I had thought I might listen to this on audiobook, but I see that there are kind of these like newspaper clipping portions, and so that is making me think that I am probably going to read this physically. So uh, it will be great to have finally read this one, know what all the hype about this is, uh, finally make up my mind about whether Taylor Jenkins Reid is an author that I want to continue pursuing, or maybe she's just not for me. And then the third book on my August TBR, and the third book that I own physically, is the first book in the Neapolitan novel trilogy, My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferriente. This is, uh, again, a very, very hyped series of books that I've been wanting to read for quite a while, and I'm extremely curious to know. I've seen mostly good reviews, but a few people who kind of have similar reading taste to me I've seen on Goodreads didn't enjoy this, so I am unsure where I'm going to land. And I actually have the second book already <laughs> uh, because it was a really good deal at a library book sale recently and so uh, if I end up loving this book I will have the second one to start reading immediately and if I don't like this book I will get to clear two books off of my physical shelves uh, because I'll be able to unhaul the first and the second together. So this is another historical fiction book. It is set in the 1950s in Italy and we are following the story of Elena and Lila which begins in a poor but vibrant neighborhood on the outskirts of Naples. 
Growing up on these tough streets, the two girls learned to rely on each other ahead of anyone or anything else, as their friendship, beautifully and meticulously rendered, becomes a not always perfect shelter from hardship. Through the lives of Elena and Lila, Ferrante gives her readers the story of a neighborhood, a city, and a country undergoing momentous change. Something about the Italian setting made me think this would be a good book to pick up in the summer. This edition that I have has kind of a coastal scene on it, and obviously Naples is uh, one of the Italian cities on the coast, and so I think that that um, could potentially have summery vibes. I'm a little nervous because I have not had a great track record historically with reading books as an adult with child and teenage protagonists, especially adult fiction that's trying to be from the point of view of a child or like teenager. So that aspect has me a little bit nervous going in, but obviously the other two books in the series wouldn't be from that perspective. So if I enjoy the writing style enough, even if the kind of the child narrator is a little irksome, I think I will stick with it because I would want to see where they go in their adulthood. But I feel like this book has just been so highly acclaimed in the last 10 years or so that uh, it's one that I finally am ready to find out what I think about. Then of course I have the Fairacre book. Uh, I am one of the co-hosts of the Follow Us to Fairacre read-along of Miss Reed's Fairacre series, together with uh, Rainy from Rainy Day Reads, Kate Howe, and Angie, who has recently changed her channel name to Angie and the Great World. And so this month's pick is Mrs. Pringle of Fairacre, which is the 17th book in the Fairacre series. And this book is going to be all about Mrs. Pringle, who is kind of one of those you love to hate her characters in the Fairacre series. It can be quite an abrasive and bristly sort of personality to the other characters in the series. So I think learning more about her backstory and kind of maybe why she is the way she is is going to be really interesting and will potentially make me more sympathetic towards her during the rest of the books in the series. Um, so I'm looking forward, as always, to being back in the world of Fairacre and in this installment finding out more about Mrs. Pringle. I really enjoy the seasonality in Miss Reed's writing and the cozy village setting is always uh, relaxing to return to. Uh, so we'll see what I think of this installment that's all focused on one of my least favorite characters. Then the fifth book on my TBR, I've kind of been craving another uh, Emily St. John Mandel. I have read Station Eleven, The Glass Hotel, and Sea of Tranquility by her, and all of them were like stunning five-star year-end favorite reads for me, uh, but I haven't gone back and read her earlier works. So she has three books, The Lola Quartet, The Singer's Gun, and Last Night in Montreal that I've never read. And the other day I was uh, kind of googling around being like when is her next book coming out even though Sea of Tranquility just came out last year uh, so I know I'm being unreasonable to have any expectations of another book already being announced and I was like you know what I should go back and read her earlier works because if I love uh, those three books so much surely I'm going to love uh, her earlier works. So I'm thinking in August I'm going to pick up The Singer's Gun and this book is apparently about some kind of crime family and the main character is Anton Waker and it says everyone Anton Waker grew up with is corrupt. His parents deal in stolen goods and his first career is a partnership venture with his cousin Aria selling forged passports and social security cards to illegal aliens. Anton longs for a less questionable way of living in the world and by his late 20s has reinvented himself as a successful middle manager. Then a routine security check suggests that things are not quite what they appear and Arya begins blackmailing him to do one last job for her. But the seemingly simple job proves to have profound and unexpected repercussions. It sounds from the reviews I've read on Goodreads while trying to avoid spoilers that this has a lot of the hallmarks that I have liked in her other three novels, including the story being portrayed from shifting perspectives and kind of an elusive kaleidoscopic timeline where we're hopping back and forth uh, before the whole picture is revealed by the end of the book. So I'm not going in knowing a whole lot, but I just know that I love her writing so much that I don't think I'll be disappointed. And I'm planning to probably listen to this book on audiobook just because I have read her other three books in that format and really, really enjoy uh, listening to her writing. Then the next book I'm hoping to read is Three Men in a Boat to Say Nothing of the Dog by Jerome K. Jerome. And this is a Victorian novel that is the pick for Kate Howe's Patreon book club for the month of August. 
and apparently it's quite a comedic novel so I think that will be kind of an interesting twist to read a Victorian novel that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's quite short and also sounds like it has a lot of summery vibes. We're following three friends who decide to take a riverboat down the Thames River and kind of following their escapades as they go on this boat expedition. I'm five books away from having read my first 50 Victorian classics and I'm really hoping to hit that mark uh, either before or during Victober this year so I can do a video tier ranking my first 50 Victorian novels. So I'm looking forward to crossing off one more book on that list uh, with this shorter novel uh, during the month of August. Then the next book on my list is a new release that I got a copy of from NetGalley and that is We Must Not Think of Ourselves uh, by Lauren Grodstein and this is a World War II era novel that I believe is coming out in October or November this year. Let me check. Yeah, publication is the end of November. So if I get this done in August, I'll actually be ahead of myself for my NetGalley review, which is always exciting. Uh, and this book is set in the Warsaw Ghetto in the Second World War, and it's based on actual archives kept by those determined to have their stories survive World War II. So I think that will be interesting because I really like uh, historical fiction that's very rooted in reality and in true stories. So kind of the basic premise, it says, On a November day in 1940, Adam Pascal becomes a prisoner in the Warsaw Ghetto, where the Jews of the city are cut off from their former lives and held captive by Nazi guards and await an uncertain fate. Weeks later, he is approached by a mysterious figure with a surprising question. Will he join a secret group of archivists working to preserve the truth of what is happening inside these walls? Adam agrees and begins taking testimonies from his students, friends, and neighbors. He learns about their childhoods and their daydreams, their passions and their fears, their desperate strategies for safety and survival. These stories form a portrait of endurance in a world where no choices are good ones. And I didn't know that there was kind of this secret archive of stories that was kept in the Warsaw Ghetto, so I think that it will be really interesting to learn more about that. And if you watched my 2022 fiction favorites, you'll see that I am having kind of a resurgence of interest in reading World War II fiction after taking a, a very long hiatus. I haven't read much World War II fiction in like the last 10-15 years because I just binged so much of it as a teenager. So this is me once again picking up a World War II fiction novel and I think I'm really going to enjoy that archival aspect to it. And then another book choice that's kind of inspired by uh, my favorites from 2022 is The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell, which again uh, is a genre that I have kind of been exploring for the first time starting last year. I believe this is a fairly famous, like maybe even considered to be a classic of sci-fi, so I'm looking forward to expanding my reading taste in that genre and seeing what I think. And the blurb for this on Goodreads says, In 2019, humanity finally finds proof of extraterrestrial life when a listening post in Puerto Rico picks up exquisite singing from a planet that will become known as Recap. While United Nations diplomats endlessly debate a possible first contact mission, the Society of Jesus quietly organizes an eight-person scientific expedition of its own. What the Jesuits find is a world so beyond comprehension that it will lead them to question what it means to be human. So it's essentially a book about what it would mean to be a missionary to a new planet and I'm excited to have kind of some escapist space travel to read about during the summer. And then the penultimate book on my August TBR is The Sun Walks Down by Fiona McFarlane. This is another book that's going to be fulfilling a prompt for my summer book bingo card which is sunset colors on the cover. It's basically a picture of a sunset so that fits the prompt perfectly. I heard uh, Katie from Books and Things mention this book because it was uh, a nominee for the Walter Scott Prize in Historical Fiction, and it is historical fiction set in Australia. Ever since I read uh, A Town Like Alice last summer, I've been wanting to read more historical fiction set in Australia, so when I saw that this uh, book had that setting, I thought it sounded really interesting. And I've heard that it has a really interesting mix of characters and perspectives telling the story, which is something that I always like, especially in historical fiction. And so the blurb says, In September 1883, the South Australian town of Fairley huddles under strange, vivid sunsets. Six-year-old Denny Wallace has gone missing during a dust storm, and the whole town is intent on finding him. As they search the deserts and mountains for the lost child, the residents of Fairley 
newlyweds, landowners, farmers, mothers, artists, indigenous trackers, cameleers, children, school teachers, widows, maids, policemen, explore their own relationships with the complex landscape and unsettling history of the Flinders Ranges. The colonial Australia of the sun walks down is unfamiliar, multicultural, and noisy with opinions, arguments, longings, and terrors. Uh, so it sounds like a bit of a heavy book, obviously having a missing child at the center of the plot is um, a really sobering thing to read about. Um, so this won't be uh, the happiest book on my August TBR, um, but I think it sounds really interesting and I'm not sure if it's based on a true story or if it's just an invented historical fiction narrative. I'm sure that's something I will find out uh, once I start the book, but the premise just sounded uh, really interesting to kind of have all of these different people from this town searching for this boy and then telling their story as they're searching. Like I said, Katie from Books and Things uh, gave it five stars and recommended it highly and I'm pretty sure she even said it was similar in writing style to Emily St. John Mandel which had me eager to pick it up. And then to balance out that heavier book topic, uh, my final book on my August TBR is a historical romance novel by one of my favorite romance authors Mimi Matthews and I have decided I would like to start her Somerset series finally and so the first book in that is The Work of Art. She writes Victorian era historical romances and this book it sounds like is set between Devonshire and London and our main character is Philadia Sotherwaite. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful of a name uh, and it says that she has caught the eye of the sinister Duke of Moreland, who's a notorious art collector obsessed with acquiring one-of-a-kind treasures. Um, but to escape the Duke's clutches, she's going to need a little help. Captain Arthur Hayward's days of heroism are long past. Uh, grievously injured in the Peninsular War, he can no longer walk unaided. What use can he possibly be to a damsel in distress? He has nothing left to offer except his good name. Can a marriage of convenience save Philly from the vengeful Duke? or will life with Arthur put her and her heart in more danger than ever? Uh, I really like Mimi Matthews books. I like the historical setting. They are usually fairly clean closed door romances and they always have uh, characters that I can get really invested into and it sounds like this will be no exception and it'll be nice to have uh, kind of a lighter romance to balance out some of the heavier topics uh, in the books that I've selected for August. So that is my stack of potential August reads. As always, I'm going into the month full of hope and excitement about all of these books. If you have read any of them and have good things to say or want to caution me against them, I would love to hear that in the comments and we will see how many of these I actually end up picking up in August. I hope you all have a wonderful final full month of summer reading ahead of you and until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book. Bye!